वेलकम टू अ कॉम्बिनेशन सेशन ऑफ बुद्धा एज वेल एज अद्वैता सो आत्मनिर्वृति सेशन एज वेल एज बुद्धा सेशन it doesn't matter whether you're doing the buddha's path or you're doing the advaita path the goal is to figure out the truth about who am i yeah who am i really am i this body am i this mind or is it something else on the advaita path you are directly shown the witness in the beginning and then you have to make an effort to understand the rest on your own through words you have to do your self exploration on the buddha's path there is a step by step technique taking you to that end step where you recognize your nature both of them take you to the same place and both of them teach you the same thing in the end you come to the truth that there is no i i does not really exist on the buddha's path it is called there is no self anatta yeah there is no self the people who were to attach to their concepts of soul heard there is no soul yeah and they created unnecessary ruckus like they always do yeah so he said there is no self anatta so you reach the same understanding on the path of advaita there is no i we could not find the i when we did our experiments on chapter 3 of atmanandas atmanirvritti se scripture so let's start with this understanding that both lead you to the same place today we'll do buddha sutta which will tell us exactly what we learned in atmanirvritti chapter 3 but in a different language sometimes just seeing it in a different language brings a new perspective yeah this is from the book samyutta nikaya sutta number 35.85 sunnata loka sutta sunnata loka sutta simply means shunya shunya is zero empty and loka is world so empty is the world or the world is empty then the venerable ananda approached the blessed one and said to him venerable sir it is said empty is the world empty is the world in what we venerable sir is it said empty is the world yeah so ananda is asking buddha in what way is the world empty i don't see it empty i see people situations things i see money i see my ascetic robe i see my ascetic bowl i see my meditation practice i see this body how can i see this world as empty yeah ananda is humbly asking this question to buddha yeah so buddha responds it is ananda because it is empty of self so empty of i there is no i in this world it is empty of self and of what belongs to self what belongs to self mine 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 so the world is empty of i and empty of mine 
It is ananda because it is empty of self and of what belongs to self that it is said, empty is the world. And what is empty of self and what belongs to self? Now he is going to elaborate. How is it empty? The I, Ananda, is empty of self and what belongs to self. Forms are empty of self and what belongs to self. I consciousness is empty of self and what belongs to self. I contact is empty of self and what belongs to self. I feeling is empty of self and what belongs to self. Whatever feeling arises with eye contact as condition, whether pleasant or painful or neither painful nor pleasant, that too is empty of self and what belongs to the self. So we will pause here and understand the entire paragraph because this is absolutely new language for some of you. I is simple to understand. I. I. Yeah. And you understand forms. On the Buddha's path, when we say I consciousness, it is simply that faculty in me which says I am seeing. Yeah. So there is I, there is a form and there is the I consciousness. When there is contact between all three, I, the form, and I consciousness, it is called I contact. Yes? And when there is I contact, a feeling arises. Sometimes the feeling is pleasant. Yeah? And sometimes the feeling is not so pleasant. And sometimes it's a neutral feeling. So neutral feeling is called neither painful nor pleasant. Very clear? Did you all understand? When there is I and there is form and the sense of seeing which says I am seeing, it's also called I consciousness. So I plus form plus I consciousness is equal to I contact. Whenever there is I contact, there is a feeling that arises. That is, I feeling. The feeling is either pleasant or unpleasant or it is a neutral feeling which is neither painful nor pleasant feeling. Very clear? His language is clear? Why is he telling you? You have now started understanding what is the meaning of arising. Yeah, You have started understanding thought is nothing but arising, sensation is nothing but arising. Feeling is nothing but arising. Arising is nothing but a wave. Yeah, You have started recognizing they all fall into the same bucket. Whether it is a thought or a feeling or a sensation or perception, everything is nothing but arising. Yeah, Everything is nothing but a wave. So when we come on the Buddha's path, he has broken down every single arising and labeled it in the sequence that it occurs. Yeah? So, I, then the form, then the I consciousness, then the I contact, then there is I feeling. It's just so quickly happening in the same second that you cannot comprehend that. But when you actually sit down and meditate the way Buddha meditates, and your mind slows down, you can actually notice the mind moving that slowly that you can recognize the arisings. That is the speciality of Buddha. He could recognize these arisings. So I hope I have clarified the arisings. There is an I, there is a form, there is the I consciousness, 
that which says I am seeing. There is eye contact. All three, form plus eye plus eye consciousness is equal to eye contact. And a feeling arises, whether it is pleasant or unpleasant or neutral. Yeah, so he's given you the sequence in which it happens. Now, the most important part, what is he saying? In them, there is no I and there is no mine. Look carefully. Just like you did in your experiments on chapter 3 of Atmanirvriti. Yeah, when you looked at form, you said, yeah, there is no I there. Yeah, it's nothing but awareness. Buddha will say, in that awareness, there is no object. It is devoid of physical objects. It is devoid of mental objects. So he calls it Shunya. Because it is devoid of objects. Yeah. So he says, the I is Shunya. The name of the Sutta, Shunya, S-U-N-N-A. That is the way it is written in Pali. In Sanskrit, it is S-H-U-N-Y-A, Shunya. So the form is Shunya. The I is Shunya of I, capital I. There is no I in that. Even in the I consciousness, the one that arises and says, I am seeing this form. Could you find an I, a capital I? So there is no self there and there is no mind there. Yeah? In eye contact, there is no self, there is no mind. Yeah? Basically, there is no I and no mind in the arisings that arise and fall like a wave. Even in the feeling, a feeling arises on its own. Whether it's a pleasant feeling or it is an unpleasant feeling. There is no I there in the beginning. When does I enter? We've done this. The I thought now comes up. It sees all these arisings. Arising number one, I. Arising number two, form. And arising number three, I consciousness. Arising number four, I contact. Arising number five, I feeling. Now comes Mr. Thought, the I thought, who is number six. And he puts one, two, three, four, five together and weaves a wonderful story. Do you see this? Yes. And we notice this happening again and again. Just become more aware. The I thought is that sixth thought that put the five arisings together into a story. Look at that I thought. Does that I thought really have an I, capital I in it? Is there a self in that? Is there mine in that? No. Even that sixth thought is nothing but an arising. Nothing but a wave. It just arose. It played for a while and it receded. So today we are going to make an attempt to understand this experientially. Yeah. This thought number six, the I thought, is the one that projects. Yeah. How does it project? It weaves the story from these five. It it says 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. Okay, now I have a good story. That is thought number 6. It is projecting a story. Projection itself is a thought. It joins the waves 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and creates number 6. Yeah. I'll give you an example. Suppose you're walking past an ice cream shop and they have some mint ice cream 
poster, nice, beautiful green ice cream with chocolate chips on it. Okay. You are passing by the image appears first. The form is there. Immediately the eye looks at it. Eye consciousness is born. There is eye contact and a feeling arises. All this happened without the involvement of the capital I or mine. The capital I was not there. There was no I till now. The perception of that image happened on its own. The, the eye moving in that direction happened on its own. Eye consciousness came up on its own. The contact between the three happened on its own. A feeling arose on its own. Number six, the I thought comes up and now says, ah, my feeling. It weaves a story from one, two, three, four, five arisings and says, okay, I want mint ice cream. Till now, there was no I there. There was no mine. The I and my story started at thought number six. So thought number six is the one that projected the story. The projection happened here. Maybe thought number seven comes up and says, I really don't want mint ice cream. And you drop it. Yeah. Many stories can happen after that point. We don't know that. But recognize that thoughts arise of their own accord. I am not really doing anything. I am not really making a thought arise. I am not making a sensation arise. Even the story, the projection, thought number six came up on its own and resided. I am just witnessing all this that is happening. When I forget myself as the witness, get involved in the story of thought number six, then I assume doership. I can never be the doer. I'm just assuming doership and I get trapped in a story. Yes. Do you understand how it is empty of self and empty of that which belongs to the self? Yes. Empty of self means it is empty of I, the capital I. And it is empty of mind. Yeah. So now you apply how this projection manifests in your own life. Yeah. Suppose you have a pet in the house yeah you speak to the pet in your language whatever that is Telugu, Malayalam, Marathi, English, Spanish, German, French yeah whatever you speak to the pet somehow the pet understands and responds also how does that happen the pet really does not understand your whatever Hindi, Malayalam, Spanish, Gujarati, German. No, no. The pet interprets whatever you are saying in its own way. Yeah, which you have no idea about. Yeah? Yet a communication happens between the human and the animal. An equation gets built. How does, does such a thing happen? You would assume that the pet has learnt your language. But this is only your assumption. Notice if there is a baby in the same house, the baby who has not learned to speak any language, he also develops an equation with the pet. Have you noticed that? So it, uh, it has got nothing to do with your language of Marathi, English, German, French. No, no. What is really happening here? Whenever I am interacting not just with an animal, with a human, with anybody, the I projects itself out. I project myself. That is the meaning of when there is an I, there is a you. 
When there is no I, there is no you. This is the meaning of it. I always project myself out. I, in that projection, I create an image in my own mind of the other person. And I speak and interact with that image in my mind. I have no proof whether that other person really exists. Yeah? I interact with that image in my mind. That is the same thing that is happening in your relationship with the dog, with your spouse, with your family members, even with Ekta right now. You have projected an Ekta and you interact with that projection. Yeah. How many times have I told you this on a phone call or when you have talked to me in a one-on-one? -on -one? You're, you're reacting to the Ekta in your head. You have projected an ekta. You are speaking to that image. Yeah. You always interact with your own projection. Yeah. I love what J.K. Krishnamurti says. He says, even when you are praying to God, to an idol, you have actually projected yourself out there and you are doing puja. You are worshipping your own self. Yeah. Whenever you interact with the image of God in your mind, you are actually worshipping your own self. Recognize that you do this projection in every transaction in this material world. In every transaction. Now do you recognize what is the meaning of projection? Yeah, with these few examples. So that's what wave number or arising number six did with the first five. Remember, again, number six is an assumed doership. There is no real doer there. The thought just arises of its own accord with the story, I want mint ice cream and it goes away. Yes, and then I thoughts continue for some time. The story continues if you keep giving it energy, if you keep fueling it. The I thought continues with its story. Now you get lost, you get consumed in this multiple I thought story after this. I just give you a simple example of I want mint ice cream, but imagine if it's a dramatic story which is happening in your life right now. You get consumed by the arisings, but you forget. That there is a gap in between two arisings. It's not possible for you to continue living without going into the gap. But the problem is you are focusing completely on these waves, these arising. The story that is going on has consumed you so much that you are forgetting that there is a gap in between where you automatically move into for gasping. You need to gasp life, that energy. And then you return back to the next wave, the next I thought. The gap is so minuscule that you overlook the gap. You overlook the gap. The gap is the void, is empty. Yeah, it is empty. Empty means there is no physical object, there is no mental object, there is no I there. Yeah, the gap is void of any object. Void means empty. It is empty of any object. So gap is empty. Yeah. The arising that arose and went away, we have already seen it is nothing but awareness. It is made up of awareness. The wave in the water is not different from water. Yeah. So a wave in the void is not different from void. And then you realize, oh, it is the nature of the void to just have certain waves in it. 
I have labeled them as an image, a thought, a sensation, a perception and then the story. Everything is the void. There is no I, there is no mind. Everything is made up of the void. You cannot find a form there really. In direct experience, there is no form. Buddha's path is also of direct experience. He says, see reality as it is. Vipassana. See reality as it is. Pashana is to see. Yeah? V is special, special seeing. So when you look closely at the nature of the wave, it is nothing but void. It is made up of the void. You cannot find a form there. You cannot really find seeing or in Buddha's language, eye consciousness there. You cannot find anything in eye contact. That is also void. That is also empty. You cannot find anything in the feeling. Whatever feeling arose when you saw mint ice cream poster, whether a pleasant feeling or unpleasant feeling. It is void. It is empty. There is no I there. I am not making the feeling arise or fall. There is no I. I am not making the thought arise or fall. There is no I. There is no thinker. There is no feeler. I does not exist. Means it is empty of self. Mind does not exist. That means it is empty of that which belongs to the self. So far it's clear. I'll read ahead. The ear Ananda is empty of self and of what belongs to self. Sounds are empty of self and what belongs to self. Ear consciousness is empty of self and of what belongs to self. Ear contact is empty of self and what belongs to self. Ear feeling is empty of self and what belongs to self. Whatever feeling arises, with ear contact as condition, whether pleasant or painful or neither painful nor pleasant. That too is empty of self and of what belongs to self. So this is also the same. Yeah? Ear is empty of self. Can you find I there? Look. You say, no, I can hear. Can you find I there? Yeah. If right now, Ekta's voice, the sound of Ekta's voice is coming to your ear. Can you find an I in the sound? Or mine in the sound? Can you call it my hearing of Ekta's voice? No, so you can't call it. Mine, your consciousness is empty of self. Your consciousness is nothing but the sense of hearing. Your consciousness is empty of self. What is ear contact? When there is a healthy ear, when there are sounds and when the sense of hearing which is ear consciousness, all three meet. That is ear contact. It's nothing but describing one more arising that happens in the sequence. Can you say, when I heard Ekta sound, I heard it, it is my hearing? No. Yeah. When I hear the sound, a feeling arises, that is the ear feeling. Can you say, I am feeling? 
Can you find the I anywhere? Capital I. Can you find I? So there is no I in the object of sound. There is no I in the sound. There is no I in the sense of hearing. There is no I in the contact of the three. There is no I even in the feeling that arises because of this entire process of hearing. Doesn't matter whether the feeling is pleasant or unpleasant or neutral, which is neither painful nor pleasant. Could you find an I in the feeling? Right now you're hearing Ekta's voice. Can you find an I in the feeling that is generated by listening to these words? Capital I. Can you find it? It is empty of self and what belongs to the self. Clear? Similarly, nose. The nose Ananda is empty of self and what belongs to self. Smells are empty of self and what belongs to self. Nose consciousness is empty of self and what belongs to self. Nose contact is empty of self and of what belongs to self. Nose feeling is empty of self and of what belongs to self. Whatever feeling arises with nose contact as condition, whether pleasant or painful, or neither painful nor pleasant, that too is empty of self and of what belongs to self. There is nothing there, absolutely nothing there. He discussed why I get lost, beautiful perfume, I get consumed by it. Why do I get lost? Because the wave number six creates a story with one, two, three, four, five. I get consumed in the story that I miss the gap that was there in between each of those waves. When you truly recognize that, yeah, there is no I, there is no mine, then even if this projection continues, the story continues, you don't get confused by the story because now you have found that gap. You have found that it is not really a gap between arisings. You have inverted it and found that, oh, it is an ocean of awareness in which there was an arising. It just arose and it went. It's, a, it's just a void, an emptiness, absolute peaceful emptiness in which the arising comes and it goes. Again the arising comes and it goes and again it comes and it goes. I don't get lost in that because I found this ocean of emptiness and this is who I am. And you will not get confused then. Then even if wave number 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 goes on and on creating a story, it is just like a play, like a game. Yeah. Let's assume that you are in a dramatic situation, okay? Um, let's take the example that you have been given the role of going on stage and being Lord Krishna. And you have to tell Arjuna, you are not the doer. And Arjuna is stuck between two options. Should I fight all my family and kill them in the war? Or should I just run away to the Himalayas and meditate? Yeah. So now this is a really dramatic situation where you have to explain it to Arjuna. Even in this most dramatic situation, you are not going to get confused. 
Why? Because you have recognized who I am Ekta. I am just wearing Krishna's costume right now. I am wearing the crown of Krishna and I am standing like Krishna and explaining to Arjuna that you are not the doer. By wearing Krishna's costume, by speaking Krishna's language, I don't forget that I am Ekta. When this act is done, I get out of Krishna's costume, I get back into regular clothes and I go off stage. There is no confusion there. Yeah? So when you truly recognize that this world is empty of I and mine, you will come on stage, play the role. When the role is done, you go back off stage. So when I am on stage, that is called Vyavharik Satyam, transactional reality. I will transact with the wife, the husband, the child, the parent, the boss, the colleague, the extended family, whatever the issue is. I will transact with this world knowing very well that right now I am wearing this costume. I have the crown on my head and I have to do my transaction perfectly. What if Arjuna is all, uh, you know, completely in his dramatic emotions? Does Krishna also lose himself and get all dramatic with Arjuna? No. Krishna always remembers that I am Ekta off stage. Like that you will remember that off stage you are the witness. Only on stage you have taken on the role of a wife, of a husband, of a parent, of a child, whatever. Are you getting what I am saying? Yeah? yeah? What does this mean? Even when I am on stage, I remember my off-stage reality. I never forget it. Yes, I never forget the gap between the two arisings. Right now, there is just a major arising, tsunami wave of drama coming from Arjuna. But Krishna never forgets that off stage, that is just Ekta, that is the witness. I do not need to become a part of this arising. Yes, but at the transactional level, to deal with Arjuna, Krishna tried all the Possible ways, didn't he? Yes, he tried to explain it nicely. He tried to become his friend. He tried to become stern with him. He tried to really get upset with him. And in the end, he said, go, you are not going to get it. He tried all the possible ways. Yes, so at the transactional level, you are just playing a role as a mother, as a father, as a husband, as a wife, as a son or daughter, as a boss, as a colleague, whatever. You play your role perfectly, very well knowing I am on stage. Transactional reality, Vyavharik Satyam, is only an on stage act, role, role play that I have to do. Yes? Getting off stage means what? Again and again, coming to the gap. The gap in between two arisings. Yes, that is going off stage. Resting as the witness. That is who I am. I cannot become Krishna 24-7. No. I am the witness. That was just a role play given to me that I do when I go on stage. Yes. So, recognize that the world is empty. When you recognize the world is empty, you will be able to do your role play beautifully, perfectly. Then, nothing will ever go wrong in your world. Yeah. Provided you remember, off stage, I am 
the witness. I am untouched. Nothing can touch me. Yeah? Because I am the void. Similarly, the tongue ananda is empty of self and of what belongs to self. Tastes are empty of self and of what belongs to self. Tongue consciousness is empty of self and what belongs to self. Tongue contact is empty of self and of what belongs to self. Tongue feeling is empty of self and of what belongs to self. Whatever feeling arises with tongue contact as condition, whether pleasant or painful or neither painful nor pleasant, that too is empty of self and what belongs to self. Especially for people who get lost in yummy food, delicious food. Yeah, you get lost in it, right? Because you start thinking, I am tasting this. Really do this experiment today. Pick up your grape or your vegetable or your fruit, whatever food you are eating and close your eyes and taste it and see, am I really there in the taste? Am I in the tongue? Am I in the sense of tasting, which is nothing but tongue consciousness in Buddha's language? Am I in the tongue contact? Contact means the contact between tongue, the taste and the tongue consciousness. Am I in the tongue feeling, the feeling that arises, whether pleasant or unpleasant? Am I there? There is no I. Then who is enjoying this delicious food? Yeah, right now you are all shaking your heads. But see the moment there is very delicious food in front of you. Pani puri, vada pav, pav bhaji, pizza, burger. Then see what happens. No, no, I am really there. Yeah, you become the vada and you become the pani puri. Yeah. Then all this knowledge is gone. <laughs> that is the time to remember this knowledge. Yeah. Then there will be no problem of extra health. Then you will never say, you know, I have become overweight. The problem of the people who are overweight is because they identify with the tongue or the taste. Yeah. Wake up and see. It is empty of self. Yeah, there is no I there. There is no mind there. The body ananda is empty of self and of what belongs to self. Tactile objects are empty of self and what belongs to self. Body consciousness is empty of self and of what belongs to self. Body contact is empty of self and of what belongs to self. Body feeling is empty of self and of what belongs to self. Whatever feeling arises with body contact as condition, whether pleasant or painful or neither painful nor pleasant, that too is empty of self and of what belongs to self. Especially for people who are very lured or tempted by touch, yeah? by the sense of touch, whether in the form of sex, pornography, or you get pulled into any kind of touch, yeah? anything that tempts you, you must do this experiment. This body, am I really there? Those who are meditating in the Buddha group. If you really are looking at your sensations, you come to a point when you are observing, observing, observing and you recognize that I don't feel the body anymore. It's complete bodilessness. It 
feels like an empty space in which just one sensation arises and goes, another sensation arises and goes, another sensation arises and goes. Can I really find I do this experiment this today? Can I really find I in the body? Can I say this is my body? And you find that which belongs to the self. Mindness. My, my, my. Can you find my? Yeah. Tactile objects is nothing but anything that you can touch and experience. Yeah. Those who are totally lost in thoughts of sex. Really touch your partner's hand and see. Close your eyes and see. Doesn't the touch dissolve into the void, into nothingness? Isn't it empty completely? Yeah. Can I find I? Can I find mine? I cannot see anything like that. There is no I, no mine, no my body or my partner's body. Recognize this. These are experiments that you can actually do and come to the realization, yes, there is no I. There is no mind. It is just a story created by wave number six which joins one, two, three, four, five and weaves a story. That is also a thought. Projection is also a thought. Yeah. Either it is a thought or it is an image in the mind or it is a sensation or it is some kind of emotional one, two, three, four outbursts. Basically fireworks. There is no I. It is devoid of self and what belongs to the self. There is no I. There is no mind. Yeah. This will become very clear. So whether there is a tactile object and the skin or the body, the body consciousness arises. There is contact between all three that is called body contact and a feeling arises. Can I find I and mine in any of these? The mind, Ananda, is empty of self and of what belongs to self. So this we have done in the experiments last week. Thought is not the thinker. Yeah? There is no thinker. There is no decision maker. There is no chooser. We all recognize this. All of us did the homework. Did you all experiment? Super. Yeah. So we realized mind, the so-called mind, I cannot find a box called the mind. I cannot find some container which has a lot of thoughts. I cannot find a container that is labeled memory. I cannot find a container that is labeled intellect. In my direct experience, I cannot find even the conscious mind or subconscious mind. These were all names that you learned to progress on the path of Dvaitam. It was great. It helped you build a foundation. Instead of looking outside, at least I started looking inside. But now I have to drop all labels. All dvaitam needs to be dropped to see things clearly. Yeah? So the mind, anada, is empty. There is nothing there. There is no I and no mind. It is empty of self and of what belongs to self. Mind objects are empty of self and of what belongs to self. What are mind objects? Thoughts, feelings, perceptions, sensations are mind objects. We already did this. Yeah? There is no I in thought. There is no I in sensation. There is no I in feeling. There is no I in perception. They arise on their own. You were walking down the street. The perception of the mint ice cream picture arose on its own. 
Did you do anything? No, there is no I. Yes, perception arises on its own. The I got attracted towards that direction, saw the poster, the I consciousness arose. Seeing arose. Is there an I in seeing? That also you experimented. You could not find the capital I in seeing. You could not find the capital I in I consciousness. Yeah, when actually eye contact happened between eye consciousness, the I and the form, there was no capital I or my seeing in that. Yeah, it just happens. You see, it happens. It is an arising. Automatically it arises. Yes, the feeling automatically arose. I did not. Make the feeling arise, a pleasant feeling arise or an unpleasant feeling arise. Feelings arise of their own accord. There was no I in that feeling. These are all mind objects, perceptions, sensations, thoughts and feelings. They all arise of their own accord. They are empty of I or mine. They are empty of self and what belongs to the self. Clear? Yeah? Then mind consciousness is nothing else but I am thinking, I am sensing, I am feeling. Yeah? Is there an I really or is this another conditioning, a story that I have told myself? Every time that your test is to take yourself to the stage where you were a baby. Does the baby say, I am seeing the toy mama? No. There is no I am seeing. There is no I. So mind consciousness is empty of self. So there is no, I am thinking, I am seeing, I am feeling. Similarly, mind contact is empty of self and of what belongs to self. Mind contact is nothing but the contact between the mind, the mind objects and the mind consciousness. Yes, and then the feeling arises. Whatever feeling, pleasant or unpleasant, can you find an I? There is no I. So whatever the feeling, that too is empty of self and what belongs to the self. It is Ananda because it is empty of self and of what belongs to the self that it is said. Empty is the world. Empty is the world. And this becomes very clear to you. Oh, it is all empty. There is really nothing there. Then you have understood the meaning of Shunya. Then your attachments drop away. Your cravings drop away. Yeah. Then you do every transaction very honestly, very simply, without creating any drama. You don't get blinded anymore. Yeah. What is the meaning of getting blinded? When there is a situation, I don't get consumed by it. I remember my off-stage name always. I always remember my off-stage truth. That is who I am. Here on stage, I am only in this costume and the name is Ekta and the Ekta is talking to everybody and helping everybody understand. Not getting blinded in this entire thing. If I get blinded in this thing, then there is ego arising, then there is craving arising, then I want something, I am seeking something and then I create all the drama. 
Yes. Always recognizing I'm only playing a role. I'm on stage. And I go off stage again and again, again and again for a gasp of life. Yeah, what is the meaning of going off stage? I keep going into the gap. Again and again, again and again. So really, when Atmananda is telling you that you're taking a stand as the witness and you're taking a stand as the mind, there's really no shifting happening. It is actually always there throughout your life. Even when you are in the drama, you keep coming back and forth. Means there is an arising and there is a gap. And then there is an arising and there is a gap. There is an arising, there is a gap. The problem is there's so many arisings back to back to back to back to back that I get consumed by these arisings. I get blinded by these arisings. Yeah, I don't notice the gap in between the arisings. Now, when I recognize that it is all empty, it cannot hold my attention anymore. It cannot consume me anymore the way it used to consume me earlier. And who's me? Who am I? I am the witness that forgets it is the witness every now and then and comes up with this arising and starts thinking that I am thinking, I am doing. And again, the witness goes back into the gap, takes a dip into its own silence, again comes back. So it is the witness only that gets blinded and again gets unblinded. The witness gets consumed, gets unconsumed. The witness itself forgets itself, chooses to play the role and chooses to withdraw from the role. It's happening moment to moment to moment in your life, whether you can see it or not. So really saying, I am taking the stand as the mind or I'm taking the stand as the witness. These are mere words. These are just to help you understand something that is anyway happening automatically. You go on stage. That is the Vyavharik Satyam, transactional reality. You've taken the stand as the body-mind. But you've never forgotten that that is my reality. That is off stage. So when I go off stage, I am in the absolute reality. Paramarthik Satyam. The on stage, off stage happens many times in a day. With husband, wife, child, friend. Even with your own thoughts, even if you, there is nobody and nothing, you put on a movie, again you get into a transactional reality. You're on Facebook, you're surfing, you're again into a transactional reality. This on stage, off stage, on stage, off stage keeps happening. Yeah? The clarity dawns that, oh, when I went on stage, I assumed doership. I am not the doer. I have to only recognize one thing that I have to drop the assumption. And that's it. It's done. You move from the assumed doership to non-doership. So the most essential thing is recognizing empty is the world. Empty is the world. I have to recognize it. I don't go around preaching my family members. huh? You start preaching them, no? Then they will get an appointment with the best psychiatrist in your town and send you there. They will all push you there. No, no, you don't tell them empty is the world. It is for myself. Empty is my world. Your world must be full. <laughs> yes. So don't make the mistake of going and doing your Sunday preaching with your family today. No, no. Empty is my world. I have to recognize it.
Yes, when I recognize that the world is empty, then I am at peace. It is for my peace. It is not for the other person. Yes, I have to recognize. When I recognize, then you will talk like Nisargadatta Maharaj. My world is full of me. It's full of myself. And people will ask you, do you don't see people and trees and things and houses and money? Say, no, no, I see all of that. But it is as insignificant as digestion going on in the stomach or the heart beating or the blood running. Yeah, it is as insignificant as that. How much attention do I pay to my heart beating? How much attention do I pay to the blood running in my arteries and veins? That much attention I pay to the world. My world is full of myself. Yes, again and again remind yourself. Just a transaction with the wife, with the husband, with the child, with the parent, with the family member. Just a mere transaction. Empty transaction. Totally empty. But because the other person cannot see it as empty, I have to play this role. If Arjuna saw that, would Krishna have to go on till 18 chapters? Thousands and thousands of shlokas? No! Krishna would have stopped. Yeah? So just like that. Because the other person cannot see it as empty, I have to play the role on stage that has been given to me and every time I get a chance, I come off stage and rest. Very clear? Yeah? So all the Buddha people will go back to meditation and recognize the empty void which also has the quality of witnessing, of knowing the breath that is arising and falling, the sensations that are arising and falling, the mind phases that are happening, the feelings that are arising and falling and not hold on to anything. Everything just arises and falls in this emptiness. Yes, and recognize, I am not that thought, I am not that sensation, I am not that feeling. I am that emptiness in which all this is arising and falling. Yes. Buddha's meditations strengthen the impression of I am the void. I am the emptiness. So strengthen that. If you keep focusing in your meditation again on the thinking and you start thinking about your husband, your wife, your child, then you are not really meditating. Yes? So always remember that. Again, again, relax the men and just smile. Rest as the witnessing void. Yeah. And just be the void. Whatever arises and falls, it arises and falls of its own accord. I do not do anything. You have to even come to that point where you say, I am not meditating. Meditation is happening. Yes? Then only whatever insights you have brought here, then they are of some use. Yeah? All the aha moments that have happened till now in life, all that you will be able to recognize in your own meditation. And they get strengthened that way. Yeah? Just listening to Ekta's voice or a guided meditation keeps the mind outside. It does not help you strengthen that silence. I am the silent witnessing void. This can get strengthened only when there is no guidance from outside. When there is no voice from outside. Yes? So drop the external guidance. Drop the external voice. And just be in silence. That is the meaning of becoming comfortable with silence, bearing the power of silence. 
you should be able to recognize I am empty. I am emptiness. I am the void. Yes, it's not different from I am the awareness or witnessing. It is the same. The void has a quality of knowing. The void has a quality of witnessing. Very clear?